This is season six of the Team Roping Journals podcast, The Score, with over 2 million downloads. This is where Team Ropers talk. Hey everyone, it's Chelsea Schaefer. Welcome to The Short Score. Today's edition is an audio article that we have brought to you by our friends at Purina. And this episode is important because there's been so much talk about it lately. This is Why Tracking Earnings Matter in Rope Horses. This article ran in our February 2023 issue of the Team Roping Journal. And this is its audio companion. If reading that many pages isn't for you, no offense, Team Ropers. I know many of you like to listen to these audio editions of this podcast. Uh, I have the numbers. Even if you don't admit it, you all listen to these. Um, Probably more so uh, and more the whole way through than anything else that we do. So thank you for that. Um, But this episode is going to go over what we're doing with the AQHA with the Riata buckle to track rope horse earnings and why even if you are just going to the jackpots, you should care about this endeavor because it is really, really bolstering the industry as somebody who is on the the business side of the rope horse market and the roping industry. I have seen how absolutely effectively uh, the growth of the Western performance horse has truly benefited our side of things. Uh, it's great for business. It's great for the well-being of the sport. It's great for the horse. It brings in more big pharma dollars as far as advertising goes because they are recognizing how much more ropers are putting into their horses. So there's more sponsorship money across the board in team roping. So we are so grateful you're here. We are so grateful you're listening to the episode of The Score today. And we will let you enjoy this audio article, Why Tracking Rope Horse Earnings Matters. Today's episode of The Short Score is brought to you by our partners at Purina. The PhD equine nutritionists at Purina Animal Nutrition tackle problems using science, and their love of horses keeps them at it until they get it right. Even with the most established feeds, they keep innovating. Even when it takes years of research, they don't stop until it's right. They are dedicated to the scientific method, but it can't capture the feeling of seeing a horse reach their full potential. It takes science and love to help your horses live their best lives. Put their research to the test at horseinnovation.com. Formally tracking rope horse earnings is a relatively new phenomenon. Before the last 12 months, databases like the American Quarter Horse Association's QData could only track rope horse earnings at judge shows where pedigrees were verified by judges to ensure rampant cheating wasn't fudging the numbers. But in 2022, the AQHA teamed up with the Riata Buckle Stallion Incentive Program to infuse some $2 million into the recorded earnings of rope horses. And for the first time, the AQHA relied on this magazine's indexing of the horses the top 15 rode at this year's Wrangler National Finals Rodeo to funnel another $1.1 million from Rodeo's big show into QData, shifting the all-time earnings list dramatically for team roping horses. But who cares? Why should ropers care if this type of money is tracked on their horses? After all, they're roping for millions of dollars in Las Vegas and Fort Worth, and you can't ride papers, can you? Now, who's tracking what? As announced in early January and on page 14 of the February edition of the Team Roping Journal, the Riata Buckle Stallion Incentive is aligning itself with the Ariat World Series of Team Roping, the United States Team Roping Championships, the NTR, and the National Team Roping League to begin a program of databasing rope horse earnings, incentivizing ropers to enroll in the program with details soon to be revealed. Denny Gentry, operating partner of the Riata and original founder of the USTRC and World Series of Team Roping, established the alliance across the industry, from the AQHA to the Equine Networks Roping Associations and Global Event Management Software, almost by happenstance. Retired from running the area at World Series of Team Roping, Gentry was approached by Chad Bios and Lance Robinson, founders of Barrel Racing's $7 million Pink and Ruby Buckle programs, to help them start the roping side of their business. Bios and Robinson already knew what Gentry was about to learn. They energized the barrel horse breeding industry, and it exploded. Now, why? What's the unintended consequence of Gentry's endeavor? He talked to breeders, a lot of them, more than ever before. My phone starts ringing every morning, and they're explaining every day what a struggle it's been for them breeding rope horses, Gentry said. And I'm seeing firsthand what they couldn't do and what they had to do to get recognition and to to develop the bloodlines. 
They claw for a spot in the horse industry and for any respect and value as rope horse breeders. It sounds similar to what we had to do to get respect for team roping within the rodeo world. I'm amazed at how little I knew about such a critical part of our sport. Everything starts with a horse. It is such a given that we don't even pay attention to it and just keep roping. But now, all of a sudden, there just aren't enough rope horses, regardless of caliber or price. So we have to elevate the importance of the horse to have a healthy industry. Now, how? The how to get team ropers to participate is probably going to be a lot of fun and no doubt will involve bonus money to ropers. But the how of rope horse tracking is going to be complicated and it's going to be expensive. Commitments have been made, goals set, and the work is underway. The good news is that at the very least, there's true fastest run wins money in the databases already. With QData's interest in the NFR horses paired with the Riata Buckle's submission of its massive payout, the industry is seeing the ripples of change already. Before the Riata Buckle, Dean Tufton's Hickory Holly Time by One Time Pepto out of Hickory's Holly C by Doc's Hickory was 13th in the all-time leading sires list with only $154,180 in earnings. After the Riata Buckle, the former world's greatest horseman champion Mount rose to number three overall with $313,228.05 in earnings, with his offspring having banked $222,700 over those few days in November. Hickory Holly Time had two of the top three highest earning horses at the Riata, Tufton's 2017 mare, D.T. Hickory's Misty Cat, that Dakota Kirkenschlager healed on to win the Riata Buckles Open for charity, and Twisted Hickory Time, Wesley Thorpe, and Sean Gray's 2017 gelding that Kirby Blankenship won the 12 and a half All Ages Championship aboard. In five to ten years, we're going to be able to sell team roping horses at a sale as yearlings, and the only way to do that is to prove that the mare won so much and the stud won so much just in the team roping alone, Kirkenschlager said. Then, if the horse is produced in the cow horse and cutting and racing, you can show that too. But we have to be able to have some sort of paperwork, some sort of backup on these horses to help determine value and make decisions. All of the associations haven't been working together. I don't know how much my own horses have won. What we do for a living is no different than anybody you see in the other events. We're all working to lead a yearling into a sale ring 10 years from now and really make a living. On the other end of the spectrum, Pepsid, the ranch horse sire on the Tongue River Ranch, whose offspring have won nearly as much at the ranch rodeos as they have in the show pen, popped into the top 20 in the all-time leader standings list for the first time with $145,950.21 in earnings. That's thanks to TRR Lucky Hometown winning the 10.5 Riata Buckle for charity on the heel side under Trip Townsend, as well as TRR Freckles Holly Dock picking up two go-round wins under Logan Medlin at the 2022 NFR. This is going to have a huge impact, Townsend said. Just like Pepsid from the Riata Buckle alone, his Colts won 82000 and my mare got another 40000 on her produce record. You'll have team roping horses with the earnings matching cutting and cow horses. Team roping is already one of the biggest sports out there, and this will allow our horses to show it too. Now, maybe the most important question, why should ropers care? Roping has been the richest Western sport on earth for decades, with the area at World Series of Team Rope and Finale paying $16.1 million in December of 2022, with more than $100 million in payouts across the sport annually. The thing I like about this is it's not a horse show format, said Clovis Horse Sales Steve Friska. Other credentials that don't have real cash value at true jackpots don't change the value of a rope horse in the sale. But if we can track earnings from a real live team roping deal, that will really make a huge difference in what we sell these horses for. The for charity programs, the Riata especially, have really changed the horse value already. It's really evident and it's making a difference. The QData top money earner and top sires lists are only beginning to evolve. While some sires experienced game-changing years in 2022, others had colts with bad luck in big moments. As the program grows and evolves, more data points will provide an even clearer picture of where top performing genetics really come from. That information will fuel breeding and buying decisions for years to come. When you go to a sale and you see the cutters and the rainers with 100000 in earnings, it makes more value for the breeders to sell the horses, the pits or ranches, Jim Brinkman said. But for ropers, there's nothing like that. Like Junior Nagara's gray mare, she had more than half a million dollars in earnings, but there's no proof of it on paper. Foreign countries, they have to have proof of all sorts of money won to export them. And all those good rope horses don't qualify. It will help the breeding, and it will help the rope horses not to be the stepchild of the rope horse world. 
We win more money than any of those other guys. The only guys who can beat us on money earned is the racehorses. If ropers will enter their horses and put their registration numbers down, this will all change for the better. Beyond the people breeding are everyday cowboys who can supplement their families by training and roping. The new emphasis on rope horses is opening up new markets for ranch cowboys and ex-rodeo ropers who have never been big in the horse business. Guys my age went to all these rodeos, and they made all these horses famous, and they got old and retired and didn't have much left, and they had nothing to show for it, Brinkman 63 said. If they had rode mares and studs all those years, and they'd had all their earnings, and you exceed the mares, embryos, and transfer them, you could make a retirement living off the horses they rode rodeoing. When they quit rodeoing, their income is all done. While they were rodeoing, they could have been producing a product for their retirement. The growing number of online horse sales is increasing horse business that is all catching up to the huge cowboy golf market. It isn't an accident that horse sale descriptions nearly always describe how long the horses have been on cattle, roped on in the pasture, or if someone has been heading and healing on them. Ultimately, the horse owners themselves will have to see the value in their own horses. They will have to see the value in the bloodlines and understand what they are worth. Now, if you made it the full 10 minutes into this article, which I recognize is a very long time to be listening to me talk straight through, I will tell you the top five overall team roping sires as of January 6, 2023. We're going to be updating this list pretty regularly, working with AQHA and Q data. But number one right now is Metallic Cat, owned by the Rock and Pea Ranch. Number two, Shining Spark. Three, Hickory Holly Time. Four, Dual Spark. And five, Play Gun. Metallic Cat has $453,168 in earnings. Number five on the list, Playgun, has $283,886 in earnings. But this list is going to change a lot. There are some rodeo cowboys already working to track their earnings. I know Jade Corkill's riding a, a Sixes Posse, which is his Playgun bred uh, Grey Gelding that he's been winning everything on, uh, that he's been riding for a couple years now. And there's lots of metallic cat horses out there, lots of hickory holly times, Joseph Harrison, uh, Travis Graves, they're riding dual sparks. We're going to see how this list is going to shift. And I know there's a lot of show me the buckles picking up a lot of earnings right now. And he's a little further down on the list in the top 10. Uh, so we might see quite a bit of change on that list already in the year. The number one Riata Buckle Sire of 2022 was Hickory Holly Time, followed by Fla Favorable Intentions, owned by the Pitcher Ranch. Number three was Wimpy Needs a Cocktail, Junior Nagara. He wrote a great Wimpy Needs a Cocktail mare that we're going to be seeing quite a bit in the coming years. Four was Pepsid, as we already mentioned in the article, and five was Highbrow Cat. The top performers of the Riata Buckle in 2022 were 7S Whiskey Sour, that's the horse Colby Lovell rode for TJ Good. DT Hickory's Misty Cat is the number two highest earning horse ridden by Dakota Kirkenschlager for DT Horses. Number three was a streak of investment by a streak of laying out of silk investments ridden by Ivy Hurst for Blake Hughes. Number four, Twisted Hickory Time, another top earner of Hickory Holly Times, $67,000. That horse was ridden by Wesley Thorpe and Kirby Blankenship and owned by Wesley Thorpe and Sean Gray. And number five on the top earners list, Classy Red Favors, owned by... Clinton Headings and ridden by Jake Smith. That horse is by favorable intentions and won $62,625 at the Riata Buckle. Now, if you are still listening and paying attention, we have our horse market special issue that's going to drop in May. It's going to have a lot more information about what's going on in the horse market. And I do truly hope you've enjoyed this horse market series we've been running since February. We'll keep it up a few more weeks, but uh, in the meantime, thank you for sticking around and we will talk to you soon. Today's episode of The Short Score is brought to you by our partners at Purina. The PhD equine nutritionists at Purina Animal Nutrition tackle problems using science, and their love of horses keeps them at it until they get it right. Even with the most established feeds, they keep innovating. Even when it takes years of research, they don't stop until it's right. They are dedicated to the scientific method, but it can't capture the feeling of seeing a horse reach their full potential. It takes science and love to help your horses live their best lives. Put their research to the test at horseinnovation.com.